Video games that adapt movies have been very common throughout the history of the medium. Classics such as Aladdin and GoldenEye show us how it's done, and disasters like Alien's Colonial Marines spit on their source material and all who ever enjoyed them. If the developers nail the adaptation, however, such games can be lucrative for the publisher and a treat for fans, which leads to more and more of them getting released and the cycle repeating. Video games based on TV shows are somewhat rarer by comparison, though, and British TV show adaptations are rarer still. Even as noble Brits ourselves, we really had to dig around for this one, delving all the way back into the murky depths of the last century. Nostalgia goggles on, please. So, as we sit here patiently waiting for someone to make a Stardew Valley-esque country life game based on old person comedy Last of the Summer Wine, we thought we'd put together a list of some great and not so great games that adapted our favourite TV shows. Well, some of them. Or, well, one of them. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games based on British TV shows. But before we get to the list, we'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And actually, we'd also quite like to thank them for just sort of existing, because we here at Triple Jump actually use NordVPN an awful lot, partly because it's so simple. I mean, I'm both stupid and lazy, but that doesn't even matter, because with NordVPN, you can connect with a single click or even enable auto-connect for zero-click protection. Then you simply choose from one of over 5,400 different servers, either either one close to home if you're just looking for the added security a VPN can provide, or maybe one from a different country if you're looking to access region-locked content on the internet. Now, you've probably heard of people doing that to watch TV shows and movies, but the uh, gamers amongst us can also do it to access region-specific games, geo-restricted servers, and even discount codes that only work in other countries. And don't worry your pretty little head about speeds, no sir. NordVPN VPN is literally the fastest VPN service out there, so there's absolutely no excuse to be missing those 360 no scopes. Mum, get the camera. Gaming aside, NordVPN is also handy for when you're browsing dodgy websites and what you get up to in your own time is your own business. Its smart ad blocking gives you a more undisturbed experience, and its automatic kill switch feature can immediately cut your connection should the VPN accidentally drop out. And hey, 30 day money back guarantee. You've literally got nothing to lose. So if you want to try NordVPN yourself, you can get an exclusive deal by heading to nordvpn.com forward slash triple jump or by using the code triple jump at checkout. The link is in the description. Go and check it out. Okay, should we should we move on with the list? Let's let's do the list. Number 10. EastEnders. We start off with an icon of British screens. Set in the fictional London borough of Warford, EastEnders depicts the day-to-day -day lives of a number of colourful characters. Watch as they struggle to make ends meet and get involved in domestic disputes that occasionally end in murder. <laughs> Classic London. If any of our American friends aren't familiar with EastEnders, just imagine something like Dallas, except it's excruciatingly dreary and filled with skint cockneys sitting in dark rooms. Though the television show debuted in 1985 and is still going strong today, no one in recent years has seen fit to attempt a video game adaptation. And rightly so, if 1987's ZX Spectrum effort is anything to go by. In the game, players take on the role of a nameless Albert Square denizen who roams the various locations seen in the show, performing odd jobs. Prepare to enjoy such riveting activities as trimming flowers in the allotments, helping with laundry at the laundrette, and serving pints in the Queen Vic. Interestingly, the full title of the game appears to be EastEnders Part 1, the arcade game. Now, as far as we can tell, no Part 2 was ever released, which means that it could still be on the way. <laughs> Fingers crossed, EastEnders fans. Actually, no, uncross them right now. We really don't want any more of this. No longer Go there. to sleep! Number 9. Doctor Who The Eternity Clock 
one of a few games based on everyone's favourite science fiction series with a resurrecting lead character and an absolutely fire theme tune, Doctor Who The Eternity Clock was released back in 2012 for the PC, PS3 and Vita. The game had a lot to live up to. At the time of its release, the Doctor Who TV series had already been around for almost 50 years and was beloved by fans for its creativity, action and variety. The game, however, was but a footnote in the storied history of the good Doctor. While it allowed players to control Matt Smith's incarnation of the character in either single-player or cooperative multiplayer action, the game was let down by bugs, glitches, poor AI and limited exploration. Still, at least you got to fiddle with the TARDIS controls and wave the sonic screwdriver around a bit. I mean, what more could a Doctor Who fan ask for, really? There are a number of other Doctor Who games out there, including Nintendo DS Adventure, a couple of early BBC Micro Text Adventures, and this side-scrolling blast-em-up for the Amiga, starring the Doctor as played by Tom Baker in all of his scarf-wearing glory. Number 8. Little Britain The Video Game Little Britain was a sketch show that aired between 2003 and 2007. It saw David Walliams and Matt Lucas playing the parts of various British stereotypes in the name of comedy, and it was popular at the time. Though not universally loved, the show remains iconic, for better or worse, and its creators are still at the forefront of popular British television to this day. The video game adaptation of Little Britain, however, is only relevant nowadays as an example of one of the worst games games ever made. This depressing collection of shoddy mini-games was released for the PC, PS2 and PSP in 2007. It saw players take part in activities of absolutely appalling quality, with clips of the show being the only reward for success, if you can call it that. Highlights include vomiting on barely animated onlookers and playing football against barely animated children. The fact of the matter is, whether you find this stuff funny or not, the game is abhorrent in all its aspects that matter, and I most certainly do not want that one. Number 7. Nightmare Nightmare, with a K, is one of those TV shows that seems made for a video game spin-off. Making heavy use of computer graphics itself, Nightmare was a game show in which teams of four children attempted to overcome a medieval fantasy-inspired dungeon scenario and win the sparkling prize on offer. Three of the children would have guiding roles and would spend their time in a studio yelling advice and encouragement to their fourth companion. The fourth team member had a massive vision-impairing helmet stuck on their head and was thrust into a blue-screen world of dark dungeons and other unpleasant locations with naught but their friends' high-pitched voices to guide them. I'm trying to imagine myself as a child in that situation, and I can only see it ending with young me being reduced to a quivering wreck in a corner somewhere. There were two nightmare games produced during the series' height of popularity. A tough and esoteric graphical adventure for the ZX Spectrum, in which players must solve puzzles and use items to escape, and an Amiga dungeon crawler, which is apparently just as impenetrable. Still, only eight teams ever managed to win the TV show itself over its entire eight series run, so at least the games stayed on brand with the crushing difficulty? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's fair. Number 6. Peaky Blinders Mastermind the most recent series on this list, Birmingham-based crime drama Peaky Blinders debuted in 2013 and features an all-star cast, including the likes of Killian Murphy and Tom Hardy, and some people who haven't played Batman villains, I assume. Popular and critically acclaimed, Peaky Blinders is a lot more than just a load of grumpy men with long coats pointing guns at each other, and it's hailed by critics as a stylish, intelligent and engrossing drama that defies expectations. The video game tie-in was fairly unexpected too, turning up out of nowhere in 2020. Acting as a prequel to the show, Peaky Blinders Mastermind is a puzzle adventure played from a top-down perspective which allows players to take on the roles of Tom 
Albion friends as they attempt to dominate Birmingham. You use each character's special abilities and engage in some light stealth-based gameplay as you sneak past guards and policemen. Peaky Blinders Mastermind was a solid yet uninspiring adventure for the most part, but it's probably a safe bet for fans of the show wanting to soak up that early 1900s vibe and listen to all that lovely brummy slang. Not that the game actually has any voice acting, you'll just have to provide your own, I guess. Number 5. Yes, Prime Minister 1980s political satire sitcom Yes Minister attempted to portray the tangled web of blustering and bureaucracy that is British politics. Witty and insightful, the show portrayed the machinations of government officials behind the closed doors of Whitehall and featured respective theatre and stage stars Paul Eddington, Derek Folds, and Sir Nigel Hawthorne as various cabinet ministers and secretaries of state. It doesn't exactly scream video game adaptation, though, does it? Still, that's exactly what it got. 1987's Yes Prime Minister for DOS, Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, BBC Micro, and ZX Spectrum was based on the sitcom's 1986 sequel series, in which main character Jim Hacker had been unexpectedly elevated to the head of government. Playing like a text adventure, the game requires you to improve Hacker's approval rating over a five-day period by conversing with fellow politicians and attending meetings in a timely fashion. <laughs> Riveting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. We mock, but Yes Prime Minister was actually well received at the time, for its excellently written dialogue and faithful recreation of the mood and humour of its source material. A satirical political treat for those who elected to buy it then. But with a short runtime and a lack of replayability, it wasn't likely to uh, stay in office for long. Number 4. Robot Wars Extreme Destruction an arena constructed from steel, bulletproof glass, flaming pits and saw blades, dangerous machines clashing with devastating spikes, pneumatic launchers and flamethrowers, a crowd baying as the carnage unfolds. 90s series Robot Wars sure sounds like the perfect fodder for a video game adaptation, doesn't it? It got quite a few of them too but they were all a little disappointing. While the show would commonly consist of barely functional flippy bots bashing into each other a few times until one of them broke down, it did definitely have its highlights. The house robots such as Shunt, Sergeant Bash and Matilda come to mind, as well as more legendary battle bots like Razor and that beautiful whirlwind of death known as Hypnodisc. 2002's Robot Wars Extreme Destruction was the most recent attempt at a Robot Wars game and was unfortunately bereft of highlights. Instead of fast, frenetic fights in deadly arenas with customizable robots, we got a borderline broken experience with hilariously bad physics and clunky controls. Still, at least you could play as the aforementioned Hypnodisc. Oh, look at that dangerous, mesmerizing chunk of metal. I wonder if it's still out there somewhere, destroying things. Number 3. The Young Ones Arising between 1982 and 1984, The Young Ones was an anarchic sitcom starring beloved Brit TV icons Rick Mayall and Aide Edmondson as uncouth, self-interested students getting involved in wacky hijinks. Though achieving sky-high popularity and a strong cult status to this day, the show only ran for two seasons, yet it still managed to ingrain itself in the social consciousness of multiple generations of British youngsters. It also got a cheeky game adaptation too. While the show had a respected comedy cast and often included performances by contemporary bands such as Madness and Motorhead, the game, released on the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and Amstrad CPC in 1986, had no such grand ambitions. Instead, the goal is apparently to pack your chosen character's belongings so that you can move house and well, no, that's it. Th th that's everything. Players pick their favourite young one and then locate and repair all of their stuff. The twist? Well, the characters you didn't choose are going around breaking your stuff and making things difficult for you. Actually, that is a pretty good representation of the show, come to think of it. So, uh, well done, Orpheus Software, I suppose. Number 2. Thomas and Friends, Hero of the Rails 
Honestly, we could have gone with any one of a number of British kids TV shows for this entry. During those halcyon days of console shovelware, loads of cutesy kids icons got in on the gaming action. Bob the Builder, Sean the Sheep, Pepper the Pig, Postman the Pat, even those babbling custard adult monstrosities the Teletubbies received multiple video game adaptations. We focused on Thomas the Tank Engine for this list though, just because of that one time his co-worker got bricked up inside a tunnel. That's what we do here at Triple Jump when people are naughty. Thomas and Friends Hero of the Rails for Wii and DS was one of a few Thomas games to be released over the years. In it, players can look forward to such exciting activities as fixing trains and sorting parts, as well as a couple of somewhat suspect sounding activities such as washing Thomas and engaging in a bit of shunting. Unsurprisingly, Thomas and Friends Hero of the Rails looks like a bit of a lazy attempt to cash in on the franchise, with most of the game consisting of cutscenes lifted directly from the animated special of the same name. As such, we can't really recommend it, but if you do insist on playing Thomas and Friends Hero of the Rails, we advise using a fat controller. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you for that, thank you very much. And number one, Monty Python's Flying Circus, the computer game. And now for something completely different. Full of silly walks, dead parrots, and lumberjacks, Monty Python's Flying Circus premiered all the way back in 1969. <laughs> nice. Starring John Cleese, Graham Chapman, Eric Idle, Michael Palin, Terry Jones, and Terry Gilliam, and filled with the usual artistic outpourings of the latter, the series pretty much defined British humour. It spawned numerous successful movies and many timeless phrases that are, um, still in common use today. Day. Nudge, nudge, know what I mean. As you might have gathered by now, there was a video game spin off too, gracing the Amiga, the Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC, and the ZX Spectrum in 1990. The Amiga version of Monty Python's Flying Circus The Computer Game actually looks like it would fit right in with many contemporary indie platformers with retro stylings and interesting art styles, and it was a fittingly odd adaptation of the iconic series. Players control recurring character DP Gumby as he collects spam, eggs, sausage, beans, and probably more spam through some darkly surreal environments. In keeping with the madcap feel of the show, progress is often interrupted for the sake of needless arguments or impromptu anatomy lessons. Does this make for a great gameplay experience? Well, no, it doesn't. But does it gel with the Monty Python crew's comedic vision? Yes, it does. And I suppose you've got to respect its dedication to the source material, at the very least.